Hello, ladies. I just want to thank you for catching another episode of Ambitious Christian Women. I am Laura Gabriel, your host, and I am here with Rita Stewart, and she is amazing. I can't wait to share with you some of her thoughts on how to get your children involved in understanding the word. And so I know a few of you have been doing the Morning Miracles Challenge with me, and it's been really fun. Some of you have found amazing ways to incorporate your um, time with your kids, with your time with the Lord. And I've been so amazed by you. You ladies are amazing. I don't have any children myself, but um, my heart goes out to the moms that are trying to balance um, that that's, it's really a struggle, but some of you have found an incredible, beautiful balance. And I think that this devotional that Rita wrote with her brother is something that can really help you um, bridge that gap between your time with the Lord and your time with your children. So let's get right into it. Um, first of all, I want to tell you about Rita herself. Rita serves as a Christian educator, a spiritual director, and gratitude coach. She enjoys reading, teaching, tea, and traveling with her husband, Gerald, and daughter, Lauren. And she wrote this book. I'm pulling it up now. It's amazing. It's Kiwi, a children's devotional. And most of us are familiar with the often quoted, it takes a village to raise a child. And these stories are offerings from two Christian leaders, you know, Rita and her brother Sid, um, who live in the village. They seek to make complex principles of faith and Christian living easier to comprehend. The stories are offerings of love and support to help children grow in the knowledge and faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. Rita and Sid are siblings who write from their own life experience and deep faith. Having reared children of their own, they understand the importance of planting seeds of faith in children. It is hoped that parents and teachers will find great joy in sharing the stories written in Kiwi with their children and all, all children whom they are blessed with yeah. the opportunity to nurture in their faith. Rita, I am so excited to share this with our listeners. Hello, welcome. Hi, Laura. Thank you so much for the opportunity. And hello, everyone. I look forward to being able to share with you and Laura today. <laughs> well, this is going to be so fun because we talked before we started recording and there was a certain um, one of these devotionals on page eight of your book that we got confirmation that we need to share. And we're actually going to do something really fun. And we're going to go ahead and act it out for you. Well, not act it out, but we'll do the voice acting. Okay. So it's actually about obedience. Um, and Rita, can you tell me, like, you, you shared with me a, a quick story on how you decided to add um, a devotional about obedience to this book. And just can actually, can you tell us the story of how this book came into being? Sure, I can. Sure, I can. Well, my brother, he is just a natural storyteller. And he's also, I call him a master puppeteer. He <laughs> loves children. I love children. And we both like to tell stories. But of course, I always defer to him because I think he's great. And he is a chaplain in the military. So often he's not here with me, but we stay very, very connected. And one day he said, I think I'm going to um, write a book. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. And he, I don't know that I'd had ever expressed to him that I had a desire to someday publish as well. I said, oh, the next time you decide to write a book, maybe we can publish one together. And he says, well, I don't see why we can't do that this time. <laughs> and I was like, oh, well, what are you writing about? And he said, stories for children so that they can come to um, know Christ and, um, you know, his love for them. And I thought, oh, I said, well, send me a sample of a story you've written. And mm -hmm. he did. And I thought, oh, I can do this. I can do this. <laughs> yeah. I actually, I actually taught fifth grade for a few years. 
Cool. So I had children. So just so you guys know, these stories are actually life experiences with Sid and his two boys and myself with my daughter, Lauren. And some of them are from stories with my children that I taught in fifth grade. I had the opportunity to, to excuse me, to teach at a Christian school. So mm-hmm. um, several of these stories are from there as well. So they're, they're, they're our stories for sure. Um, with this particular devotional, I remember saying to sit on the journey for writing that we were going to have 21 stories in the book. And he's like, 21? I don't have 21. I don't have 21 stories to write. And I was like, well, I don't either, but that's the number that God placed on my heart. So it'll come. So he would write, he was in Germany, I think at the time, and he would write. And when he finally finished, he sent me this package all longhand, I share with Laura. He doesn't yeah. type. I've always typed his work all the way through college, all the way through seminary. Bless, bless his heart. <laughs> so in the meantime, one day, I think we're at number 20, and I don't even remember how many he wrote and how many I wrote. It was irrelevant. We're so close, my brother and I, that that wasn't even the point. The point was we wanted this work to go before God's people and his children. Mm-hmm. So one day I remember there was one more story to come and I thought, oh my goodness, there's not um, a moral about obedience. And I thought, well, how can we write a children's devotional and not have that? So I remember sitting quietly that day and just waiting. And this is the story. This is the last story that was written to be entered in the book that we're going to share with you now. Awesome. Well, let's do it. Okay. So if you own the book, turn with us to page eight. That's where you can find <laughs> it. And if you do not yet own the book, I bet you can actually download a copy right now if you take <laughs> below this video so you can follow along. Okay, let's go. Okay, here we go. The title is Stop in the Name of Love. And just as a caveat before we start, this story is actually about my husband, my daughter, and I. So here we go. Stop in the Name of Love. Sydney, are you finished helping dad wash the car? Asked mom. Well, I think so. Yeah, I don't want to do that anymore, replied Sydney. Okay, if you're done, you can come over and help me plant the last flowers if you like. Just don't go out into the street. You need to stay in the driveway with your dad or come over in the yard to play where I am. Okay, replied Sydney as she rolled her eyes. A few minutes later, mom looked up to see where Sydney was. Sydney, she called, why are you standing at the edge of the driveway? Remember that you should not go out into the street. You must play in the yard or the driveway where it is safe. Sydney, are you listening to your mother? Called dad from the other side of the car. I'm watching you carefully. You seem to be tempted. Come back up the driveway to play. Sydney, stop. (laughs) Don't run out into the street. A car is coming. Listen to me, stop. (laughs) That evening, mom sat down with Sydney on the sofa. She put her arm around her and asked, would you like to talk? I guess so, mom. I know that you are not very happy right now. However, discipline and consequences are necessary when you, intentionally, when you are intentionally disobedient. Learning to be obedient requires that you listen and do what is requested of you and not the opposite. I ask you not to stop, excuse me, I ask you to stop and not run out into the street because I love you and do not want you to get hurt. However, You did not listen and went into the street with a car coming. Dad and I want you to learn to follow the rules which are created to keep you safe. Sydney hung her head. I know. You know we can avoid consequences that we really don't like if we learn to be obedient. Do you think you can work on that? All of us will help you because we love you. Now give me a hug. I need one, and I think you do also. Thanks, Mom. I love you, Sydney. I love you too, Mom. I'm sorry I didn't listen earlier. 
Oh, that's so cute. So friends, the moral to this particular story is the key to obedience is diligent listening and then acting upon what is heard. And then there are two scripture references that are given. And I shared with Laura earlier that we did not um, type out or write out the scripture references. We just gave the references because our goal is for parents and or teachers to actually look up the biblical reference. So take out the Bible and um, look up the passage and read it together. And then there are two reflective questions with each story so that there can be a dialogue. So it can be an actual learning experience for the children as well as the adult with them. This is really amazing. So I can see, you know, I, I'm thinking about the age range and maybe your child um, is of a reading age and they can actually follow along um, like we did just now and read with them. Um, so that would be fun, just like we did. And then imagine taking your child into the word and looking up and then maybe even asking them, you know, how does that connect? And then of course, these amazing reflective questions. So I'm looking at the first ref reflective question. You don't mind if I share this, right, Rita? Oh, no, no. Okay, great. And it says, why do you believe there are consequences as a result of disobedience? Um, really good question. And then I just love how by doing the devotional style and having it be real life situations, we're taking the child out of a scenario so they can see it from God's perspective. Like God sees what's happening, right? Um, instead of the kid feeling like something's happening to them, right? So that we can have these reflective uh, conversations. And then the second question here is, um, the Bible encourages children to obey their parents. Why do you think this is written for us in the Bible? So mm, I can imagine some great conversations having happening between parents and their kids because of this devotional. And um, I think it's really important that as we do our morning routine, uh, we can, we can include our children and it can be a meaningful time with them. There's a woman um, in our group named Jenny and I, she posted this gorgeous photo of her with, with her two daughters and they were each doing journaling time um, together. Yeah. And so maybe the reflective questions can become journaling topics. So if you're, if you're struggling with how to involve your kids in this morning routine challenge or um, how to get them in the word on a daily basis, um, how to get them journaling. I think this is a really good resource. So Rita, tell us more. Like, I'm so excited. I, this is so fun. So show me, show me your book. I want to see okay. how you said it has 21. It has 21 stories and I'm mm -hmm. not sure which way they can see it. Um, I'm actually at my desk and I'm going to mm -hmm. try to see, I have a picture of it. Um, okay. Yeah. Oh, nice. So, oh, so I cute. have it framed. I have a framed <laughs> one for myself and a framed one for my brother um, mm -hmm. because I wasn't mm -hmm. sure if they could see it the other way. Um, mm -hmm. But it's just been such an honor, right? To be able to, first of all, given the vision, you know, to write the stories, to write the book, the whole process in terms of how it came about. And Sid and I have been inspired to write the second book. So Kiwi 2 is coming. And <laughs> yeah, so pray, yeah. pray for us, pray with us mm -hmm. um, on that. And we do have it, we translated it into Spanish as well. So we were mm. very excited about that. But just know that we receive feedback from adults as well as families with children. Some adults actually use Kiwi as a personal devotional as well. So cool. just know that. And then we had one school in Germany where the questions were used, just as Laura said, as a writing prompt. So this mm -hmm. one teacher, she read the stories to the students and then they had to write reflections. So we have all of these um, reflections from this one classroom. So that was just so, so meaningful to us. And yeah. again, as Laura has shared, it is just a blessing to be able to be intentional about, you know, nurturing your children in matters of faith. Um, and that is and was our intention with Kiwi to support parents, to come alongside parents, to support them in that manner. It's, it's just been a beautiful, beautiful experience. 
Awesome. Yeah, I, I know that this is going to help some women um, in this group and also whoever's out there on YouTube. You know, if, if you're looking for something that's uh, an easy, beautiful read um, for your daily devotionals and you just want a way to connect real life with scripture. And I think this is going to be really nice for you. So um, make sure to don't leave it here. Take the link below. It's going to take you to a place where you can find this book for sale. Um, and I think they can download it instantly too, can't they, Rita? Well, there is an option on the publisher side. So, or if not, just reach out to me once you go to the page. Okay, very cool. All know. right. So they can get started right away. <laughs> I like it. Okay, and um, I'll be looking out for you. Did you say you have a YouTube channel? Oh, yes. Me? Yes. I, I, yeah, I you do. <laughs> I do okay, have a YouTube cool. <laughs> so I can connect I can connect them with you there too, right? So they can find more of your videos and stuff. Yes, yes. And I'll make sure that I put this on there as well for other individuals. But we'll talk more about that. Thank okay, you. Okay, sounds, <laughs> sounds good. Thank you so much for your time, Rita. I love this time together. And um, I'm excited. I think this is going to make a big difference um, for a lot of the women that have been asking, <laughs> how do I do this? I feel like um, my kids are distracting me from my time with the Lord. And, um, I think that this is going to help them, um, connect the dots. So Wonderful. thank you again, Rita. Thank you everyone. God bless ladies. All right. Take care. Bye. Thanks Bye. for watching. Mm -hmm. Okay. We did it.